you know the figures here on, on, on the Virgin Islands. Too many of your citizens, uh, in excess of 30 uh, percent, do, do not have the means uh, to realize the fullest potential. They don't have the means to watch and listen to the show if they're out of range or, or, or if they, they don't have the means. That's a problem in this 21st century, and it limits so many opportunities uh, for persons uh, here on the Virgin Islands and beyond. Fantastic. And I want to just go to uh, back up a little bit because I, I, I was rather intrigued by, I looked at an article that I received uh, that, that basically talked about your style of leadership. And uh, it was a morning consultant article. Yes. It says uh, the Federal Communication Commissioner, Megnon Clyburn, really, really wants, to know, wants you to know she's not one of those inside the beltway type. Right. What do you mean by that? Uh, Oftentimes, when you see people um, appointed to certain uh, positions, they've been in the D.C. area for a long period of time. There are known quantities uh, right there inside of the belt, meaning that D.C., um, Northern Virginia, Southern Maryland uh, experience. I People tell me not to say this, but I say it all the time. I didn't spend more than two weeks of my life outside of uh, South Carolina. Uh, before wow. I came to uh, the commission. Now, some people might think that is limiting. I consider it empowering um, because it, I did not say that I stayed home, um, you, know, I, you know, every single week out of the year. But mm -hmm. what I did was I was a, uh, cared enough about contributing to my community to go back and take what I've learned uh, back to those communities. And now, given this incredible opportunity that I've had for seven years, I've been able to leverage that to really focus in and hone in on policies and procedures and most specifically making sure that uh, the decisions we make uh, speak to the needs of uh, everyday South Carolinians and, and people from, is it Crucians? Crucians, yes, there you go. Yeah, I'm right. learning, I'm that. learning, right. and I do not drink rum. <laughs> <laughs> Please, you know, no offense. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it, it just really, really matters that you have somebody who has a hometown uh, homegrown sensitivities when they come to DC to make these decisions, so we don't make them in a inside the beltway vacuum. I think that's important. Um, when you, the Virgin Islands is, is considered or designated as a rural area yes. for census uh, consensus purpose through the uh, U.S. Cons uh, census board. Mm -hmm. uh, are we unique? Or what you see happening in Saint Croix is happening across the country and in, in, in throughout rural America. You're unique in a lot of ways. You're what we call um, an insular, uh, you know, a, a place. Meaning that uh, not only are we have a lot of rural communities, um, but by that definition, um, but you are very vulnerable uh, when it comes to uh, weather. Uh, you know, I can claim I'm from Charleston, South Carolina, mm -hmm. and there are a host of similarities uh, between this culture um, and, and, and mine in terms of uh, our. Uh, I'll put this gently, uh, the way we came to this country, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, in terms of, you know, where we uh, were brought and where we were auctioned and our vulnerabilities when it comes to weather. So there are a lot of things in terms of shoring up our infrastructure that we have in common. There are a lot of things that are different. You're way more vulnerable, uh, you know, being a series of islands than we are. And uh, with, to be perfectly frank, you're way um, more, um, vulnerable when it comes to the relationship to uh, when it comes to Washington and some of the policies. Uh, uh, and so I look at it, let me give you a tangible example. We have a program that um, I had been pushing to reform called the Lifeline Program. Now you've heard a lot of negative things about it. You've heard people call it the Obama phone, but let me tell you what it is. It's a 30 plus year old program that says if you qualify um, for certain economic programs, uh, if you are below the poverty, at or below the poverty level, you can get for uh, $9.25 per month subsidy uh, to offset the cost of um, uh, your uh, telephone, um, your monthly telephone bill. Mm -hmm. Now, for a number of years, it was just for that standard uh, home phone uh, that you plugged into the wall. A few years ago, we expanded it under the Reagan administration, want to be clear there, in, in, in the 80s. We expanded it to um, to a mobile phone because that was a wave is going. In December, that subsidy you will be able to use to offset the cost of broadband, which in too many places, it's too high, um, especially places like this one where you might not have a lot of competition. 
and so uh, nine dollars and twenty five cents per month month I'm pretty blessed lately there were times when I still remember that I was not that might not mean a whole lot you know I, I paid ten dollars for a hamburger in the airport the other day but nine dollars and twenty five cents uh, uh, per month yeah. could be the difference between uh, uh, almost a week of some, some people eating and so, you know, when you talk about Can't what that random. means, um, it really could mean the difference between, um, you know, making some awful choices that people have to make in to ensure that their children have the means to do their homework after hours, uh, for them to search online for uh, different job opportunities, or create their own opportunities online, which has been incredibly empowering across this world. You see you know, re the most remote uh, places people are selling their wares around the world and um, no middle person taking away the bulk of that profit. I can't tell you how many places I've been in have been uplifting but what has not been is that there are too many places on the mainland with all due respect mostly rural and on the Virgin Islands I've spent my weekend with limited to no connectivity. Mm -hmm. I'm not complaining I'm just stating a fact and um, I felt helpless. I felt vulnerable. I can't imagine, uh, you know, uh, I cannot be satisfied where millions of people are living uh, their lives that way. It was just an extended weekend for me. But there are people living day to day like that, and that is unacceptable in the 21st century. Absolutely. And before I hand it over to my colleagues, you served in 2013 as the chair of the FCC. Interim chair, but in, I'll, interim, I'll, interim I'll, chair. I'll, I'll take the title. In, in, interim chair. <laughs> and in, in the article, it talks about a little bit about uh, a striking difference, a contrast between you know, the current uh, Tom Wheeler style of leadership and when you served. But they said during the six months you were there, you managed to have a, a significant impact on the FCC. You want to talk a little bit about that, please? I'm very proud of uh, the five and a half, six months uh, because people doubted us. Mm -hmm. People doubted us for some obvious reasons. No, I am not an attorney. You could probably tell by um, by the way um, uh, I speak uh, some days. Even the confirmation process was unduly long. It, 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 it was all of that. She's absolutely uh, right. Um, and there were people because, again, I was not inside the Beltway. I don't have the standard uh, pedigree. But what I knew I had uh, was compassion. What I knew I had was the ability uh, to read and interpret. What I knew I had was the sensitivity uh, to, to individuals back home who people ignore. There are large portions of our population mm -hmm. that, with all due respect, are not as well represented as they should be when it comes to a voice uh, in, in the halls of regulatory authorities um, in, in Washington, D.C. and beyond. And um, what I believe makes me different is I speak for those people. I, I, I understand uh, people that I grew up next door mm -hmm. to um, in uh, between Charleston and Columbia, South Carolina, and their voices and their experiences make a difference. So each decision I made, including the people that I hired, we hired the first African uh, American chief of staff at the FCC. That was done, um, you know, under, uh, you know, during uh, my interim uh, chairpersonship. And not only was she the most qualified person to be there, she served as a symbol uh, for, for those who said, oh my gosh, why not me? And I said, you have the capacity to do that and the ability to do that. And, and it was because of her and that team that we were considered wildly successful. I'm very proud of that because it's not what everybody else, it, it was not um, shaped in, through the lens of the past. It was shaped, you know, with a forward uh, vision and focus on, on the future about what America looks like, what, um, uh, you know, what the, uh, the, our communities look like, what this world look like, and who um, has the capacity uh, to lead. And there is no one particular matrix for that. And I, I, I really feel strongly about that. You know, and a lot of the things that she's talking about are things that we struggled with through the committee for years and years that are now coming to the lifeline is one of them. Uh, I served on the Spectrum Task Force and you were able to auction off some important spectrum that we, you know, were having trouble, you know, getting to that point. Um, so there were a, a 
myriad of things that got done and some mergers also. Yes, uh, we were very active during that time. We were not uh, warming the seat, so to speak, and, and people uh, made the assumption that that would be the case. Uh, we did tee things up. We had a, you know, a spectrum auction. We teed things up for the next series of uh, auctions that uh, we are, uh, are experiencing uh, right now. We've got a big incentive auction going on. Mm -hmm. uh, right now. And none of those things would be possible if you didn't have the building blocks and un uninterrupted uh, series of building blocks of policies uh, and, and decisions made. We were not afraid to lead. Mm -hmm. uh, we were not afraid to face those difficult decisions. Um, and we were not intimidated by those who would say, well, you know, just, uh, you know, keep the seat warm until the next person gets here. Um, I, I joke and say that um, uh, we looked. We lived our lives in two-week cycles, and what I mean by that, every two weeks there was a rumor that uh, Chairman Wheeler was going to uh, uh, be, uh, you know, coming in, and he was going to the vote was going to be taken, and I, I used that as a motivator for me to get more things done, and in my period of time. Uh, and we had a 21-day government shutdown. Mm -hmm. um, let me uh, mm -hmm. affirm during oh that um, time we got within a couple of hundred um, items. Uh, Given the same, if I were to look at the same time period of my predecessor, I think I was two or three hundred uh, docket shy of clearing the same amount of items. And had I had that 21 days, I would have cleaned his clock. <laughs> and I say that in a, in a very positive and uncompetitive because, again, um, the capacity and the ability to, to lead and make decisions and really serve our communities. That comes in all shapes, forms, and colors. You, you sure made the most of that opportunity. I was saying earlier that when I sat on Energy and Commerce, we were having blackouts during the playoffs. And Angie and I worked with Major League Baseball and, and some okay. of the communications companies yes. to make sure that we would get them. Mm -hmm. But that was only for a period of time until, uh, while that contract was in place. Yes. But the sports lovers should really love you because <laughs> you were able to um, get through a uh, proposal to um, eliminate that sports blackout. Dump, right. Yeah, for yeah. Um, baseball and football, so everywhere. So that, thank yeah, you for that, that. I appreciate it. And I, I cannot claim uh, to be the biggest uh, football fan in the world, though, you know, I've got, I've got to push for my Panthers because I'm from South Carolina. <laughs> um, um, but I, what I will say is um, for people who could not afford to go to games, those games are pretty expensive. I mean, look at what's going on in the World Series. If you see a, a per ticket, you know, it's Ooh. two grand, um, you know, the last That's time I be crazy. Right. And so when you talk about, um, you know, the football team um, or, or the baseball team, or, you know, any professional team that your tax dollars went to support that infrastructure. And to say that if you can't get a ticket to the game, that you can't watch it on TV if within a certain period of time it's not, you know, 80, 90 percent um, sold out, I, I just uh, felt that uh, on so many fronts that was not right. And that rule is no, no more. And I am proud um, to say that um, I, I pushed uh, for that to happen. And, uh, and now glad, it's in the past. I'm glad, and I'm sure Stacey Plaskett is glad because I was afraid to come home <laughs> when the blackouts were in place. So that saves her from having to go through that. Great. All right. I'd like to pull in our other colleagues in the virtual um, to be able to uh, have an opportunity to uh, engage you on some, some of their questions that they have. Um, mm -hmm. uh, David uh, uh, Edison, uh, any questions at the point? They probably had muted their phone for a Yeah, okay. So they'll probably come in. Okay, good. Okay, while while they unmute their phone. Um, your position is an, an appointed position yes. by the president. Yes, it is. Um, one of, I lived in New York for a quarter century. I came back home in 2003. When I lived in New York, the issue of digital divide was just as prevalent then as it is now. Uh, and the question is, what are we not doing as a country? Let me just give you some st some st statistics. Uh, there is when we talk about the digital d divide, we're talking from a consumer point of view, where access to and connectivity is an issue where uh, uh, certain demographics of the country, uh, particularly poor, the poor and uh, low income family, don't have uh, the, the, the hardware, whether it's the, the computer or the laptop. A lot of folks are using their mobile device uh, to connect to the internet. Now, we're looking at 5.5 million jobs, vacant jobs, currently in the country, and they're basically technology-based uh, jobs. 
you have 20 percent uh, of women participating in the technology space uh, field you have I think uh, about uh, six percent uh, African-American in the technology space and about maybe two three percent Hispanic there is the consumer divide and then there is the the workforce divide is what's the correlation between that um, you think investment and I say in investment in people and investment in infrastructure. So when you talk about uh, the digital divide when it comes from um, when it comes from an infrastructure or a uh, standpoint, uh, you basic business decisions are being made. Companies are investing where they're going to get the most return on their investment. Uh, so they're investing in um, the the riches of areas. They're investing in areas with their uh, of people where there's a high concentration of people. Now, were there places where I visit where there might be more prairie dogs? And I think I saw, uh, do you mongoose. have mongooses here? Mongoose, mongoose? Yeah. Uh, however you conjugate that. Mm -hmm. I saw a mongoose this morning. And when 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 I... <laughs> when, <laughs> what is that? No, I well, freaked, it, I'm sorry, I freaked our, out a little our bit. Comparative, com uh, so wait, animal that's if, comparable to the prairie dog. But wait, wait, wait. wait. If, 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 if she saw the mongoose, how, what was your reaction when you saw the iguana? Did you see an iguana? Well, the hip, well, prehistoric looking no, dragon looking thing. No, so you you know I I, <laughs> I, I do know I, I did watch Mutual of Omaha, so I don't I know what that looks like. Um, but um, you know I'm saying that to say when you've got um, uh, you know more prairie dogs or mong more mongooses goose than people, uh, then the investment is not going to organically flow there. Mm -hmm. And what what we should do and should do better um, as a government, we're doing this, um, uh, and there's always room for improvement, is to provide the incentives for companies uh, to invest. And so if you remember back in 2010, under the affordable, uh, you know, care, uh, I was about to say about affordable care, I'm sorry, under um, uh, the, the recovery, um, the recovery, um, uh, the investment Act, um, act uh, you know, back again in 2020, ARA, as some people call it, uh, we distributed about six billion dollars to go to uh, you know infrastructure in terms of broadband infrastructure. And and your companies, uh, it, two companies that I'm familiar with on the Virgin Islands, got in excess of sixty million dollars to to, million. to, yeah, yeah. And, and, and to um, put access. And two companies in particular, one got about fifty um, eight million um, to do the uh, the uh, infrastructure, and another co company got nearly uh, I think about two point five million dollars to, to work on um, outreach programs. And so I say, that, I mentioned that to, it can't not be just infrastructure, though that's the major part of it, particularly when it comes to affordability. If I don't have the uh, the means to uh, to be comfortable and use it, if, if they, people talk about digital literacy, I just say plain old literacy. If I am not equipped enough or uh, confident enough to use that, then you're building a technology bridge to nowhere. So we've got to think mm -hmm. about um, not just the infrastructure, um, but what it means, um, you know, for that person if they have the capacity con con to connect. Will they get all that they can get out of the prospect of connectivity? Can they afford that device, as you mentioned? Can they afford that monthly service? Because it's not going to be free. It might be subsidized, but it not, it's not going to be free. So we've got to think about um, you know, all of that. And to me, um, when you talk about and try to make the case for uh, why we should invest, why the government should play a role, particularly in places where the investment is not organically flowing, I say look at the cost that we're paying now for people not being connected. Mm -hmm. uh, you have um, individuals who may not have a first line of defense when it comes to um, seeking medical um, exactly. assistance uh, that if they had a, a broadband connectivity um, and a device that you're looking on right now and the ability that people are seeing me online right now, they could interact with their medical professional and get the types of uh, goods or services they need. I heard a commercial on the way here about one of your uh, a competitive internet service providers talking about um, uh, what they're doing uh, for people who, um, uh, the, the young lady we met just now is homeschooled. What type of augmented um, materials sh could she have access to if uh, the others, um, you know, similarly situated um, uh, were all connected. Um, the teacher, if she wants to take Hmong, a language of Hmong or, or, or something, you know, there might not be someone in her school to teach that, but an online experience would allow that. Uh, again, think about the world of possibilities. And if you've got a connected, um, one of your providers I think is doing this, if you've got a connected infrastructure, then that means more business 
um, in investment here. You could have that virtual call center that I heard about uh, that's uh, being either talked about or, or developed here. Uh, and so these are the things that would not be happening um, if we didn't have our eye on the um, you know con connectivity um, you know prize. And so these are the things that um, uh, th this is why it's so important for us uh, to ensure that there is a government role to play where the private industry is not filling the gap. Uh, Donna, do you, because uh, I want to... You go ahead, you yeah, go ahead, I'm trying to... Because there's a whole lot, you got to excuse me, I have a lot of questions and I know there's Please. only some little time to do that. I, I want to talk about, I'm sure you're aware of the fact, and I guess we made the case why we got $75 million from the federal government to expand, the, the to, to, to connect the middle mile yes. uh, to the rest of the island. When Global Crossing and all the telecoms invested over $30 billion uh, during the time, the dot-com period, uh, where, you know, the internet was, you know, this novelty thing and mm -hmm. everybody was racing to, to get a dot-com uh, uh, created. Uh, the, 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 the fact that St. Croix, this small little tiny landmass, which is part of the Virgin Islands, but is not part of the contiguous United States, mm -hmm. uh, and our ability to uh, effectively grow and expand our economy, we're challenged, as you can imagine, in so many different ways. Technology, technology allows us, enable us to be able to do the type of things that we wouldn't normally do because technology allows us to do things remotely and to communicate. It is the greatest equalizer I've seen thank in you. my lifetime. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And and so I wanted to be able, I wanted, I want I want to be able to. Uh, David have a question. All right. Let, let's let, let Okay. Uh, let me just finish up this thought. Uh, how did that strike you that Saint Croix? Most people don't know what Saint Croix is, but Saint Croix is the second destination or the second location in the world with the second largest bandwidth second to New York. How does that strike you as a as a regulator? To know that this little island, obscure, no one knows about, but we are the second largest concentration of fiber, fiber optic bandwidth in the world second to New York. So I say, how do we build on that string? Mm -hmm. mm. um, I, I say to you, um, Bravo that I immediately pause. You know, how, what are we doing with that capacity and with at the ability, that ability? What are we building? What are we leveraging? Uh, what are the relationships and the partnerships uh, that, um, uh, that we are seeking out to uh, ensure that that's not the only bragging right we have? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I, I'm not trying to come up as, as negative. Please don't interpret it that no, way. No, not because just, you have the, it, it, it goes back to what I was, one of the first speeches I made was looking at um, broadband connectivity in two half miles. One half mile is the infrastructure, you know, what you spoke about. The other half mile is the adoption and the ability uh, to leverage and to use that to, 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 to the best of our uh, abilities to, to, to meet the, uh, the, the current needs of, of our individuals. So what are we doing with that one half mile would be my counter um, you know, question um, while saying congratulations. Quickly, I will move to that. Uh, because as long as, you know, I've, do, I've done a little, they made the mistake of letting me um, rent a car here, which is <laughs> really, I don't know what they were thinking because I have, that's the first time I've driven on the left side of uh, the road. Um, but uh, so far, so good. Mm -hmm. um, nice. I just nice. knocked on wood. Nice. Um, uh, but, but what I'm saying, I'm seeing a lot. And it's not all equal and equitable, and it's not all pretty. And my thing is, I will go to the next celebration uh, with you gladly if everyone had the opportunity to to economically and professionally and uh, medically leverage um you know what you're speaking that's when we celebrate uh respectfully but, but and the reason i brought that up because because history is teaches us that there's nothing new under the sun correct uh in the mediterranean there was a country called cyprus Small little tiny place, but it carried a wheel of big stick. It was a very important, critical shipping uh, region in the world in terms of the shipment of goods and, and, and uh, merchandise. Now, you did say that technology is a great equalizer. It doesn't matter that what size we are. The fact that we possess this asset right. mm -hmm. that allows us, this, the continent of South America has high speed internet because of St. Croix. When you think of the three rings, okay, Hollywood, Florida, uh, I think it's uh, New York, uh, Brookhaven, New York, 
I think it is, and then there's Syncor. Those are the three rings that control 75% of the traffic mm -hmm. on the Eastern Corridor right. of the country Yes. And, and, and the rest of the Caribbean. And so uh, I, I want folks to hear from you, yes. someone who is in a position of authority on the federal level, not only from a regulatory standpoint, from, from a resource right. standpoint, that Syncor has the capacity Absolutely. to be as great as we want to be because we possess an asset that gives us the ability, the capacity to do if so. If not for you, as you mentioned in those examples, those three, you know, uh, three mm -hmm. tiers of examples, we would have problems on the mainland. Absolutely, I hear you. Um, what do we do with that capacity and with that power? Is 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 um, I guess the uh, underlying point that I'm making. But you're absolutely right um, that the power, uh, the, the ability, is is definitely within your hands. But you mentioned some stats, and I want to reinforce a couple here. However. 37% of your population does not have access to fixed or mobile broadband service as I sit before you. 62% of your population only has one fixed um, internet server provider and another 38%, you know, they don't have fixed broadband at all. 59.5% uh, of the population has access to wireless broadband, not 100, a little less than 60%. Uh, and so when you talk about that power in which and the significance that you have with that, um, I, I want to make sure that um, that we know that we still have some work to do, you know, um, on the island when it comes to the rest of it. Because I'm always from the rest of the, what's the rest of the story? What's the rest of our capacity? What's the, the, the rest of the the remaining part of the Absolutely. work of the ability we have to do? Absolutely. Uh, hold my thought. We need to take a break. Folks, this is the Economic Roundtable here on WSCX 970 AM and the Kalalu Network. We'll be right back. Is the AC off? I know because you're sweating. I'm sweating a little bit. Is it off? Sometimes I used to sweat on the yeah. island now. Did you look at this schedule? Are you meeting with the RT Park? Are you meeting with them? Um... I think we could not coordinate for that for some reason. Okay. She may be off island because we have problems getting her on this program. Okay. Well, David. Um, yeah. Yes. Are they back on? Are those yes. people on? The yes, we are. Yes, we are. And he's the person. Yes, he's David. The first director okay. of the yes, founding director. Yes, we are. Director of, yes. Well, no, no. When, when I'm sorry, we're on a break. I'm sorry, David. We're on a break right now. I thought you meant. And, um, yeah, because they mentioned that to me, and um, I don't know what happened. I just couldn't. I don't know. Yeah. And what about VI? No, no, no. I, and I, I, no, 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 I, I, want, I want you to talk yeah. about, because mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm going to bring up our okay. our initiative, Silicon Island Exchange. I'm going to bring that up. I just want to kind of lay the groundwork of, David you know, where right. they're hearing yeah, from the, the someone on the federal level about talk about what are the, what are the potential um, of really uh, positioning uh, uh, technology uh, as, a, as a means to grow our economy. But feel free to bring the dynamic of, and the vision, so what you've done, are, what the unfinished business, and talk about how you see, you know, the local government, federal government working together, at the university, you what name what it. I don't want you, just you feel free to uh, uh, insert what you believe is a, a relevant, you know, a point of discussion. Okay, thanks. So we got him coming in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, David, as soon as you plug that in, um, lose it again. Yeah, David is the former CEO of the University Research and Technology Park. Yeah, so. And so is not, that the building that I saw when I was the white one with the window? Building. Beautiful building. Yeah, right, yeah. like a mm -hmm. mill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you couldn't fuck up with the. Yeah, I don't know. Because I, I, she's, she she's it relatively was mentioned. young. And um, she's black. I have no idea what happened, but I know it was mentioned. Yeah. I don't know if she's she on not, travel. She, she probably is not here. Oh, yeah. I can feel it already. Thank Lisa, you. Lisa, whatever. Lisa Lynn or whatever. She was at a hackathon on TV last night. Who? So, on CNN. The, a hackathon. She was at this major hackathon. You know, with all the kids, mm -hmm. like we, we started having our hackathons here at the university. It's just all about it. Okay. See, the model, the model, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. The model in which we've created, um, the, the, the two things I want to touch on. Um, SETI, we, we are looking to introduce what we believe is a, an agenda or platform that will position us to be a technology hub. Right. 
and a capital market hub in right. this region because technology enabled us to do that. Mm -hmm. And so we've been talking about that continuously on this program. And it's one thing they say a man is not a prophet in his own hometown. Hearing it from me or mm -hmm. us, it's you know, it may not be embraced fully. But but to, to, to hear it from someone on that level coming from Washington okay. saying this is real, right. you know, okay. th this is something that they really can't ignore. Okay. You, you know, uh, and I'm hearing a lot of discussion about how they can fix the economy, but I'm not hearing a lot of discussion on the on the technology front Done. with these candidates running for anything. Done. They're talking about water parks and on all this other stuff. I'm like, you know. What about no, even I'm like, a, even how does it, we're talking this global economy? We need right. to be able to be connected to the globe, right? Even in my for my candidates, I'm not yeah, nothing, nothing. nothing. We'll have to insert some of that. As a matter of fact, they did a whole program and they were talking about jobs, and I'm trying to call in because not in the particular space of time, not one mentioned entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I was like, come on guys. Mm -hmm. So you're going to David when we come on? Yeah. I know yeah. you got to give somebody else a break. They yeah. I, we, we did, but, but, but they're not, they didn't answer. I know, I, you know, I, 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 I went to school with some of my stepkids yeah. and my okay. cousin. And, yeah. So I've known them since Yeah. Edison said he's listening, which was, I'm shocked. He, 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 he said he didn't have, like, he just yeah, he said he's him. listening. He said he was listening. I thought he would have been more, uh, you know. He'll jump in next week when we do the other one about well, yeah. HBCUs. Yeah, he, uh, he wants it on the education. Like he loves. Um, and David was asking me what, what direction should we go in. And so I told him, you know, bring the time that you were the CEO of the RT Park and talk about the relationship on the governmental level mm -hmm. with the university how mm -hmm. that was how all that came together and and looking forward to the federal relationship and and, and what we can do well yeah it's it's election time too so, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, so it's, it's, it's coming out to wire and, so they get Talk inundated with commercials i almost know people's uh, uh placement I'm number nine. I'm number thirteen. I'm number fifteen. Who's Auntie? Who's, who's that's Angie calling? Who's Auntie Donna? You meeting somebody at No Bones? Mm. Uh oh, I better look. Uh, meeting somebody at six o'clock. What's her? Uh, five o'clock. Somebody just texts me and says, "I might have a first one before I have the oh, six o'clock." Raymond, Raymond Williams. Ray, Raymond wants me to meet him at No Bones. Yeah, it's right nearby. Okay. You remember mm -hmm. Raymond, right? Oh yeah. Now. I'm hoping that I, I know that your schedule is tight and I, and I appreciate this phone interview, but I want to be able to talk about SETI Silicon Island Exchange Initiative. Uh, if your schedule to permit, we can we can talk a bit about that. But I want to really tell you what we're trying to do. And, right. I read a little bit about it. Yeah, so. I said, your service clearly is, he says, Auntie Donna, can, he's the only one that called me Auntie Donna. Like, I'm so old compared to him. So. Do me, can you do me a favor and let Nyan know I'll meet her after you guys get off at No Bones. Her service yeah. clearly isn't working. <laughs> All right, folks, welcome back. This is the Economic Roundtable. I'm Anthony Weeks, your host, with my colleagues, both in the virtual and in the physical studio. We have a special guest uh, with us in the studio this afternoon. Uh, it's important to uh, remember she did, even though she is a commissioner, uh, Mignon, uh, Clyburn, uh, she is a current commissioner, but she served. She know what it's like to be in the driver's seat uh, as the chairperson in 2013. She is appointed by the president, and um, and certainly she is. Uh, she's been a um, what is an, a, well not a change agent, but you you've been a yes, force. She's, she's been a change agent. Change agent. Okay, so was that was that correct? Okay. I I, I don't argue with you. Girls. You were a force <laughs> to a force to be reckoned with. Uh, I appreciate and, and, and so uh, one of the things I want to be able to say. They always say, well, what can potentially come out of the Virgin Islands from a technolog technological uh, point of view? They say the next Google, the next Facebook, the next whatever is going to come from somewhere. And the derby race is on to see who's going to be the next Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. Okay, places like Miami and, and New York certainly are two hot spots that have competed for that. But as far as the Caribbean is concerned, basically, uh, 
based on the, the fact that we have that infrastructure, we have the case where we can emerge as a major technology hub because of our the vast fiber optic network that we have in place. That being said, we are developing an initiative called Silicon Island Exchange. Mm -hmm. And back in 2006, U.S. Treasury and the IRS gave the Virgin Islands a special, special designation to allow us to attract technology companies to be able to set up shop here in the Virgin Islands. And so when I think of what the Treasury is doing and what IRS has done, the White House and Congress is doing, and I'm thinking now the FCC, mm -hmm. all of the federal resources and you know support are in place for us to do what we have to do. And I want people to understand that because we've been talking about Silicon Island Exchange to create a, a, a technology hub and a capital market hub. And I want people to know this is not some pie in the sky stuff. This is real. So think about it in terms of the past. Uh, think about what we did with um, w when uh, there was a debate back in the 30s and 40s about whether or not we should have a, a rural electrification a around this nation. We said that it was a must because number one, people were dying. Um, they were dying because of exposure and they were dying because they could not preserve their food. And we said, no matter uh, that where they live and how much money they should, they should you know, they have, that we're going to create these cooperatives so that, uh, again, where the investor uh, utilities are not going, uh, we're going to create these uh, these exchanges, so to speak, or, or, or these um, electric co-ops uh, to, to bridge the gap. We did that on the telephone side, too. Mm -hmm. We did some extraordinary things when it comes to water quality because we knew that, uh, you know, uh, across this nation and, um, you know, in the insular, in the territory, you know, I hate to say it, use the word, uh, in, on the Virgin, Virgin Islands and, and beyond, that there are some issues when it comes to water quality. And we put some things in place and had federal standards, and we've got there were uh, grants uh, that were being delivered and realized. We've got to look at the technology and the infrastructure of the day. That's technology. Um, and we've got to look at it with the same sense of urgency and importance um, uh, and attention as we did when we talked about clean potable water and when we talk about electricity. This is the infrastructure of today. Is as important as uh, you know paving the roads and, and um, you know ensuring that we have uh, clean water, and ensuring that we have electricity. It is that important because again, I was not exaggerating when I said uh, that connectivity, that technology, all of this you know is the greatest equalizer. So it has compressed and expanded at the same time. It's opened the doors of opportunities. Uh, for people who were at the mercy of either middlemen or, or people who did not give them the credit uh, that they deserved, that, that they could be, um, you know, empowered uh, individuals. So that's why it's so important for us uh, to, to as, um, and it has, it has to be all hands on deck. We know at, at the FCC that we can't do it alone. We've got an eight plus billion dollars universal service fund that's going to fuel a lot of this. That's not enough money. And so we're going to have to leverage with private industry, foundations, and others to ensure that that happens. That's a, coming back to your core question. You have got the infrastructure. A lot of people's problems is the middle mile, you know, that the middle mile problem is the problem. Mm -hmm. When you go on native lands, when you go up in the bush in Alaska, when you go to these other places, the middle mile issue is the problem which prevents opportunities to be, re, you know, from, prevents them from being realized. If in a large degree, not 100%, if that's off the table for you, there's nothing stopping you. There's nothing stopping, you know, from leveraging. But here is my, you might have seen me cringe just a little bit when you talked about the other hills and valleys. You know, you got, uh, you know, Silicon Hills in Texas and Silicon Valley and West Coast and all of these other, you know, places that are springing up. I caution you to be you. And what I mean by that is however technology can help you augment and leverage what your natural resources and capacities mm -hmm, are, mm -hmm. you allow that to be. Don't try to be like, you know, um, those in California. Don't don't try to mimic what's going on, you know, um, you know, in, in Texas. Silicon Harlem is trying to do the same types of things and they're almost at the same. My, there might be some synergies that you might just want to speak about. There's some people that are trying to attract um, infrastructure there. But don't try to be anything 
that's inorganic to your um, infrastructure. And I think you will be extremely successful um, if you were to recognize Absolutely. it. Which brings me to what exactly the research park direction is right now. To leverage our music or whatever, you know, what we have here and tie that into technological advancement and, and creating an economy around it. And so I hope at some point that you will get a chance to meet the, the new director as well and that we'll be able to get her on the program because I think that's exactly where she's trying to take the RT part. Uh, David, um, I'm sure that uh, you've been wait waiting patiently to present your question. Do you have questions you'd like to, uh, or questions you'd like to present to uh, the commissioner? Okay. Uh, Alfie, uh, I'm not sure what's going on with the phone. Uh, uh, I know that they're there. I think the headphones is not working. Um, what I'd like to do, it, it's, I don't want to delay that. Um, the, the, I, I want to talk a little bit about the fact that when we talk about, Alfie, there's a problem. We're not hearing anything on this device here. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> I see what the problem is. <laughs> um, we have a we have a, a fifty minutes left, and I want to I want to get a sense, I want to get a sense of what we should be doing in terms of how we should prior prioritize our agenda. And I want to go to the point where I looked at the four strategic uh, mandate, if you will, I'm mm -hmm. calling that uh, from on the FCC site. Mm -hmm. It says uh, strategic goal number one: promoting economic growth and national leadership. Strategic goal number two, protecting public interest uh, goals. Strategic goal number three, making networks work for everyone. Strategic goal number four, promoting operational excellence. In no particular order, do you want to kind of expand a little bit on that, the strategic uh, goal of the FCC? So uh, I think that you honed in on the word strategic. Um, but what you did not say is hear or see is uniform. Okay. And and that's the that's the point. You know, I don't. I hate to be repetitive here, but I really, I I think a lot of times um, we have a tendency to compare ourselves to others. Um, it's easy. I started to to bring up Singapore. You know, an island nation uh, that um, just continuously from uh, you know, from a technology um, side just really has leveraged its own strength. Now it's it's. It's an economic capital of the world when you talk about, you know, technology, when you talk about banking, when you talk about, because what they did was leverage their natural resources, their people and their talents. And so I keep going back to that. All of those four points that you mentioned, um, you know, as a part of um, uh, what our charge to keep, so to speak, uh, to the American people. is what we are attempting to live by, but it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. You know, the, the program that works in South Carolina may not work over on St. You know, John. And so there's nothing wrong with that. We need to be nimble enough. I always say we need to be like eucalyptus trees. You know, uh, you know nimble enough to be able to take the sway, you know, what, what, what the elements may break, but so strong that we don't break. And, and so that's, you know, that's kind of what, what I live by. It, so it's not uniformity. It is really, you know, us again trying to leverage the talents and using technology because guess what? We've been talking about some of these same issues for decades um, and now. What's the variable here that I think could be the breakthrough? I think it's technology because I think it allows us to leapfrog from where we are to where we should be be going. And that's why it's so important for us to look at technology as the infrastructure of now and to leverage and double down on our investment, um, it's to leverage and double down when it comes to our conversations, and to let our young and mature people know, because on the two spectrums, on those two spectrums, where our emphasis and where our weaknesses are. When it comes to the elderly who could use uh, connectivity the most, they're the least likely to be connected. For comfort level, you know, in terms of digital literacy, sometimes economics, they're on fixed income, and oftentimes, particularly if they live in rural um, and under um, under invested areas, that's the problem too. And young people um, who can teach those, uh, you know, more um, mature people who need to be better and differently educated because the way we grew up, how our classroom experiences, you know, what they were, they are not going to cut it when it comes to uh, the jobs uh, you know, of, to, of tomorrow. So we need to really say, what can we do 
um, to more adequately integrate uh, what technology um, has to offer in our lives. And, and, and it needs to be all hands-on by way of investment and opportunities. And I want to, I had a, a, a forum about um, a week and a half ago. And this young lady who's a, a YouTube, uh, she has a, a show on YouTube, Young African American Female. And the one thing she talked about, and I thought she, uh, uh, how do I want to put it? She kind of took sort of the veneer off, but when we talk about STEM and STEAM, mm -hmm. sometimes when we talk to our children about that, it seems so far off and like only certain people can do this. But she said, she gave an example that I thought, uh, I hope um, you know, everybody would internalize. She said, when I talk about um, uh, science and technology, um, science and technology, I've got some people who want to develop their own lipsticks. I've got some women, that's science. Mm -hmm. What's that more? I mean, if you don't have all of the, you know, um, formulaic, all of that together, right. that lipstick is not going to adhere. It might cause some type of breakout. Mm -hmm. And so, so just about everything that we do involves science and technology. So we need to demystify what we mean and show young people, uh, mature people, and all of us in between, who are probably more mature than we want to mm -hmm. let on, but that's another story for another mm -hmm. segment, um, that um, it, it is a part of our everyday lives. And it is not this big mystery that, you know, th that the person lives, looks a certain way or comes from a certain, um, you know, a, a part of the globe that, uh, you know, that's, there is an exclusive when it comes to that. It is every part of our lives. When you see people along the road, you know, making um, in my where I'm from and maybe here too, sweet grass baskets. There is, you know, that integrates, you know, all of the, you know, the scientific or the building blocks for everything that, that we're talking about. So there's nothing in our lives that is not integrated, and we need to approach young people where they are and say, this is you. This is the face of STEAM. You know, this is the face of, um, you know, what technological, you are the face of, you know, what that looks like. Let me, and let me, let me just see uh, if our colleagues are still there. Uh, David, this can you hear us? You should be. David, Edison, are you there? I thought Alfie just did something that yeah. let him okay. come in. Uh, he, 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 I'm so sorry. I, you no. know, maybe one time I can call in and be able to talk to David. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, let, me, let me just say that the uniqueness in which you speak about, about Silicon Island Exchange, because of the fact we are a chain of islands up and down the Caribbean, uh, west, east and west, uh, CARICOM has attempted to create a single market economy. They couldn't do so because they couldn't create uh, agree on a, um, a single currency yet. yet. To, 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 yet, yet. yet okay. Uh, I believe that the Virgin Islands, in its unique position, being a part of the United States, being American but uniquely in the Caribbean, can be a, an important gateway. We were in the past an important gateway for the rest of the Caribbean, and because of where we're positioned street, uh, geographically, we're going to be able to use technology to bridge and connect the region, because right now that is not the case. And so St. Croix, the Virgin Islands, is in a position, if we play all, all our cards right, we can use technology as the means to unite the region because right now it's not taking place and we believe technology will be that great equalizer to create that uniqueness that you're talking about. Well, I, I trust that um, that cohesion um, you know, will take place because, again, um, uh, it, uh, my uh, parents used to lecture me, me about, uh, you know, <laughs> I hate to say this, but no man is an island. And we really have to, um, when we talk about how we give ourselves competitive advantages, how do we uplift our communities um, in, in our islands and um, you know, whatever our, our, our areas of interest are, how do we do that? Very rarely can we go it alone, but it doesn't mean that you lose your autonomy from you know, your cultural autonomy. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. not what we're saying. Mm -hmm. We're just saying, and, and the reason why, even though there's some friction, you saw those 28 plus nations um, in the EU do what they did because they knew that to compete with the US or compete with other places, they had with to unite. Less, they had to unite. Yeah. And so um, I, I am hopeful that people will see more economic upsides than some of the maybe cultural and political um, challenges um, uh, that we have and saying, look, we'll work out the rest of it. Um, and if nothing has, um, prepared us for just looking at the political season should really toughen us up a, a little bit saying that we could we got to it's in our economic 
in long-term best interest uh, to ensure that um, that we, we get past that. And there are strength in numbers, uh, the, the, the old adages, you know, those old things, the, the, the sayings that um, our ancestors said, those, they are absolutely true. We don't lo have to lose ourselves uh, in that. And you've got an agency at the FCC that recognizes, that does not, is not coming from a perspective, of, of, from a place where we said it's your, um, the, the way we interact with you and the way uh, we um, invest with you is not going to be the same as, as the mainland. It's not going to be the same as uh, South Carolina. We recognize that. And it's up to you, with all due respect, uh, to challenge us and to leverage um, and to uh, ensure that we're doing right by you. Uh, you're a U.S. citizen. I'm a U.S. citizen. You should not have a second class interaction uh, with this regulatory agency. I am here to um, uh, affirm that you will not, um, but it's up to you to bring me the facts and figures I need uh, to be your advocate uh, to do the types of things that I know you want to do uh, to, to, to f further leverage. Um, it won't happen um, if this is our last conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, that's a good way. Uh, Donna, any, anything? No, no. I, I, well, let me, let me just quote, here's a question I have. Can or is the internet regulated by the FCC? That's just a question I just can't seem, I'm not getting a straight answer. Mm. They're saying the internet is not regulated, but is it regulated? So we had, um, as you know, uh, the court upheld our open internet rules. And we have a light touch regulation when it comes to the internet, the FCC. A light but touch. A light touch, because it's not your, um, it's not the same type of regulation as when you know when you use your telephone or, or uh, back to the telegraph. Going, but not saying that that's when you were around. Um, but um, <laughs> that's okay too. <laughs> uh, but but it, but it is. It, it's it's ensuring that your relationship with your internet service provider is one that is transparent. It is ensuring that they, um, when you sign a contract with them, you know what the rules of the roads that there's they cannot favor traffic over you. So is there a, over over yours if you've got a business and they've got a business where you know there might be a, a, a related or, or some type of interest that they cannot favor their um, uh, their business interests over yours. So is there a regulation uh, if if you. If, if, you're asking me a, a question. Yes, it is. Is it regulated in a way in, uh, of old? It is not. It is recognized. It's flexible enough to recognize that if we're not nimble, as I mentioned before, um, and forward thinking, that we will throw out competition. Uh, we will throw out, um, you know, options. That is not our goal. Our goal is to protect the American public. And if uh, there is not a cop on the beat, with all re due respect, history has shown us uh, that uh, you will be um, uh, more vulnerable. That, I don't think, works for big business, small business, or individuals. Interesting, because uh, coming up on my next show, NBC Live in the Marketplace, which is driven by news, one of the headlines is FCC rules on sharing consumer information could ding broadband provider profits. And so, you know, it's, I'll, I'll talk about that. I'll get into the news later on. So I just wanted to get a sense of whether or not that massive beast called the Internet, should it, can it be regulated? And it, I know the debate is pretty uh, robust on that issue. And I just wanted to kind of get a sense from you where, where you saw that. Again, issue. your interaction between you and the Internet service provider, what we call the on off ramps, is what we're talking about. And as long as we're talking about legal engagement, nothing, if it's a legal activity, then you're going to see another series of um, uh, entities come in. Another agency. But, but your relationship with your Internet service provider who has very significant sensitive information about you. Absolutely. There is absolutely some oversight um, regulatory. Ah, um, and, and so I good. just wanted to make that. Uh, Fantastic. Point. Thank you. Well, uh, Donna, I, I, anything closing before we. Uh... No, I, I mean, this has been really, I think, I hope that people were re really able to listen into this program because it's, it's not only informational, but it's also, it should encourage and inspire people who feel like they're powerless and can't do, you know, can themselves be engines for economic development here, uh, who feel that we don't have the tools, we don't have the resources to understand that we do, but it's important for us to really just actively be involved in making the best use and the most use of the things that we do have. Well, Commissioner Clyburn, I want to thank you for taking the time to spend some time with us. Please invite me back. Yes, I'm looking forward to that, Donna. Uh, I, I want to thank Donna for, for arranging <laughs> that. Uh, I'm looking forward to the ongoing continued follow-up conversation on this issue. I want the Virgin Islands to know that uh, we have a friend in the FCC.
in terms of what we believe we can do. Uh, certainly, we're going to do our part as a private uh, think tank to really uh, help to augment the issues on that front. This has been another live edition of the Economic Roundtable on WSCX 970 AM. I'm Anthony Weeks. Coming up next is NBC Live in the Marketplace. We'll talk in a minute. Thanks. And, and we can get on. Oh, yeah, yeah. He said. He said, "Man, we had gremlins." He said, "Gremlins all day." Oh wow! Jeez, he's, yeah, I, I don't know. The last time I saw you, you're in your conference. Right? Was it a conference room? I guess you had your, yes, you know, all meeting, your folks yes, a meeting when you approved our distress sale, yes. our acquisition. Yes. You know, WSDX very much appreciate yes. your vote. Thank no you. doubt about that. I mean, I think that when we first, uh, you know, acquired the station, we recognized.